Hey, math students. Let's, uh, let's do some practice. Let's do some practice with uh, simplifying trigonometric equations. All right, so uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, I got a problem that says, well, actually, before I jump right into it, let me show you the problems we're going to do, okay? So you can, uh, if you want to hit the pause button and uh, take a screenshot or copy those down, that's what we're going to be working on today. And then how are we going to be simplifying those expressions? We're going to be using these identities here, okay? So again, if you haven't written these down, write them down right now or take a screenshot or something. Okay, now, number one. Number one says the cosecant of theta times the cosine of theta is what? All right? Well, in a situation like this, uh, put everything in terms of sines and cosines. Because a lot of times when you put it in terms of sines and cosines, it, things are easier to see. So cosecant, that's a one over the, whoop, one over the sine of theta. And cosine is just cosine, but I'll write it as cosine of theta over one because I'm multiplying and multiplying fractions makes it easier that way. And so this is gonna be the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. And I know what that is. Cosine divided by sine, that's just the cotangent of theta. All right. That wasn't very hard. Cool, all right, nice start. So now we're gonna do one plus the cotangent squared of negative theta. Alrighty. So number two. Number two says, am I in a good place? Yeah, I'm in a good place. One, number two says one plus the cotangent squared of negative theta. What is that? Okay, so first I have to think, okay, cotangent of negative theta. I know that some uh, uh, trigonometric functions are even and some are odd. And if I remember correctly, and I do, uh, it's the cosine and the secant that are even and everything else is odd. So uh, that means the cotangent of negative theta is the negative cotangent of theta. Okay? However, the cotangent squared of negative theta that's like saying the cotangent of negative theta squared, okay? And that would be the negative cotangent of theta squared. And remember, if you square a negative, it still turns out positive. So this is going to be the same thing as the cotangent squared of theta. Okay, so that means this is 1 plus the cotangent squared of theta. And uh, hey, one of my Pythagorean identities tells me that that is the cosecant squared of theta, and that's exactly what my answer is. All right, let's do number three now. Number three says the tangent of uh, theta, tangent of theta times the cotangent of theta minus the cosine squared of theta is what? Okay, now, a couple of things we can do here. One thing we can do is to say, let's put everything in terms of sines and cosines, which, which will work. However, it's also good to remember that tangent and cotangent, those are reciprocals of each other. So this is like saying the tangent of theta times one over the tangent of theta minus the cosine squared of theta, and tangent times one over tangent, that's just one. So this is one minus the cosine squared of theta. What do we know about the cosine squared of theta? We know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. That means sine squared equals one minus cosine squared, so this is just the sine squared of theta, and that's my answer. All right, next one. Uh, this next one is going to be uh, number four. Number four says uh, we got the cosecant of theta minus one times the cosecant of theta plus one. And that equals what? Okay, 
This, uh, this little pattern here, I remember this. I remember this from studying uh, quadratic functions. I remember that anytime you have uh, a plus b times a minus b, it's going to be a squared minus b squared. We call that the difference of squares. Okay, and that's exactly what we have here. a minus b times a plus b equals, so it's going to be the cosec cosecant of theta squared minus 1 squared. Okay. By the way, this form here, we're going to see this a lot. Difference of squares, uh, is uh, that's something you need to know because it's going it, to, like I said, you're going to see it a lot. So this gives us cosecant of theta squared, which we write as cosecant squared of theta, minus 1. Hey, it's one of my Pythagorean fun, uh, fundamental identities. That's uh, cosecant squared minus 1 is cotangent squared. So this is just the cotangent squared of theta, and that's my answer. Okay. Number five. What do we have for number five? We have uh, cosine squared of theta times 1 plus the tangent squared of theta. Okay. Let me show you the, there's actually two perfectly fine ways of solving this one, okay? Let me show you the easy one first. The easy one is you look at 1 plus tangent squared of theta and you say, hey, isn't there a Pythagorean identity about 1 plus the tangent squared of theta? Yes, there is. It's the secant squared of theta. So that means we have the cosine squared of theta times the secant squared of theta. And aren't cosine and secant just reciprocals of each other? And if cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other, then cosine squared and secant squared are also reciprocals of each other. And if you multiply a number of times it's reciprocal, you get 1. So my answer is 1. Okay? That's one way to do it. Now, another way to do it would be to say, well, let me put everything in terms of sines and cosines. So this will be cosine squared of theta times 1 plus the sine squared of theta over the cosine squared of theta. Okay? And now let's distribute that cosine squared. So cosine squared times 1 is cosine squared of theta plus the cosine squared times sine squared over cosine squared. Well, the cosine squareds are going to cancel out, and you're just going to get the sine squared of theta. Cosine squared plus sine squared, we all know what that is. 1. So either way you do it, you end up with 1. Let's do another one. What number are we on here? We are on number six. Number six, ooh, this is a good one. Number six says the cotangent squared of pi over two minus theta times the cosine squared of negative theta plus the cotangent squared of theta times the sine squared of negative theta. Okay. That equals what? So, here's how you do this. First off, what is the cotangent of pi over 2 minus theta? Well, pi over 2 minus theta, that's like saying 90 degrees minus theta. That's like saying the complementary angle of theta. Okay, this is one of our cofunction identities. The cotangent of the complement of theta is the tangent of theta. In other words, this is going to be the tangent squared of theta times the co... Okay, now hold it. What's the cosine of negative theta? Remember our even-odd identities? Uh, there are two functions that are even. That's cosine and secant. And what that means is the cosine of negative theta is the cosine of theta. And the secant of negative theta is just the secant of theta. So the cosine squared of negative theta is just going to be cosine squared of theta. Cosine squared of theta plus, we'll leave that alone, cotangent squared of theta times, okay, so the sine squared of negative theta. Let's think about this for a second. The sine of uh, negative theta is the negative sine of theta, right? And that's because uh, the sine function is an odd function, okay? Actually, it's not because of that. The sine function is an odd function because of this. I got my cart before my horse. But anyway, that's what odd and even mean. So uh, 
So if I were to square this, if I were to square this side and square this side, well, shoot, then the, the, the negative doesn't even matter because negative times negative gives you a positive. So this is going to be the exact same thing as the sine of theta squared. And of course, the sine of theta squared, the way we write that is sine squared of theta. So even though this is an odd function, uh, the, because you're squaring that sign, the negative ends up going away anyway. All right, so now what do we have here? We have tangent squared times cosine squared plus cotangent squared times sine squared. Uh, let's put everything in terms of sines and cosines, shall we? That makes life a little easier. So this will be sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. That's the tangent. Times the cosine squared of theta, I'll just put it over one. Plus, remember cotangent is cosine over sine, so cotangent squared will be cosine squared over sine squared of theta times the sine squared of theta over one. And hey, 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 I see some simplification of fractions that I can do here. And I end up with just the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta, which equals one. So this whole thing ends up just being one. Pretty cool, huh? I think so. All right, let's do number seven. Number seven tells us uh, the secant of theta, secant of theta minus tangent of theta times one plus the sine of theta. All right. Um, well, shoot, there's two things I could do. One thing would be change everything to sines and cosines. Another thing I could do is, would just be to multiply these two binomials. I'm, I'm leaning towards the second one. Let's multiply the binomials, see what happens. So that's going to get us the secant of theta plus the secant of theta times the sine of theta minus the tangent of theta minus the tangent of theta times the sine of theta. All right. Okay, well, now is a good time to put things in terms of sines and cosines. So this will be 1 over the cosine of theta plus uh, 1 over the cosine of theta times the sine of theta minus uh, sine of theta over cosine of theta, that's my tangent, minus sine of theta over cosine of theta times sine of theta over one. All right, uh, we can do this. So I have cosine, 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 cosine. So everything, the, my cosine is, is my uh, common denominator here. So this is going to be over cosine of theta. One plus the sine of theta minus the sine of theta. Oh, I see something I can simplify. Uh, minus the sine of theta times the sine of theta, so that's going to be the sine squared of theta. Okay, plus sine of theta minus sine of theta, those go away, and we get 1 minus the sine squared of theta. 1 minus the sine squared of theta. Remember, sine squared of theta plus cosine of squared of theta equals 1, so 1 minus the sine squared of theta is the cosine squared of theta, and that's over the cosine of theta. And so, well, Cosine squared over cosine is just going to be equal to the cosine of theta, and that is our answer. Let's do number eight. Number eight tells us we have one plus the tangent of theta times the cotangent of theta minus one and everything is over 1 minus the tangent of theta. Hmm, okay. Uh, let's just multiply this through, see what happens. Okay, so 1 times cotangent is cotangent. Let me put a little equal sign here. Uh, cotangent of theta. 1 times negative 1 is minus 1. Tangent times cotangent. Remember, tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. So the tangent times the cotangent is going to be 1. So this is plus 1 and then minus the tangent. 
minus the tangent of theta, all right? And this is over 1 minus tangent of theta, okay? Uh, well, minus 1 plus 1, we'll just say bye-bye to that, and we end up with the cotangent minus the tangent over 1 minus the tangent. Hmm, okay. Um, now would be a good time to put things in terms of uh, sines and cosines. So this is going to be cosine of theta over sine of theta minus the sine of theta over the cosine of theta over 1 minus the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. Okay? And uh, shoot. All right, well, uh, let's change this to be uh, the cosine of theta over the cosine of theta instead of 1. That way we have a, a common denominator in the denominator. And uh, let's multiply... Well, hmm, okay. So, uh, and let's multiply this numerator by, we're going to do cosine of theta over cosine of theta and sine of theta over sine of theta, okay? So, let me show you what I just did. What I'm doing is, in, I have a fraction over a fraction, okay? So these fractions here, I'm trying to get a common denominator, and these fractions here, I'm trying to get a common denominator, okay? So the way that I got a common denominator up here was to multiply this fraction times cosine over cosine, and this fraction times sine over sine. Now my common denominator is sine times cosine. Downstairs, I had 1 minus sine over cosine, so the 1 I changed to cosine over cosine. So now I can call this, can I still, I, I still got some room here. So now I can call this cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta, let me draw a little line here, uh, over sine of theta times cosine of theta, okay? And that I am putting over cosine of theta minus sine of theta over cosine of theta. And remember, if you divide uh, uh, fractions, you're just multiplying by the reciprocal. So let me just write this this way. Let me write uh, cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta over sine of theta times cosine of theta times cosine of theta over cosine of theta minus sine of theta. I'm running out of room. Okay, first off, let me get rid of this cosine and this cosine. Secondly, let me remind you that this is the difference of squares. So this right here is the cosine of theta minus the sine of theta times the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta, okay? Uh-oh, did I run out of room? Well, take my word for it. This says cosine minus sine times cosine plus sine because it's cosine squared minus sine squared. And you'll notice that one of those uh, will uh, cancel out with that denominator there. So what do we end up with? Okay, I got some room here on the left. Um, what we end up with here is... Uh, uh, what we end up with here is this is going to go away and this is going to go away. So we end up with the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta, that's from over there, over the sine of theta. That's from right there. Okay? And that is the cosine divided by the sine, which is the cotangent of theta, plus the sine divided by the sine, which is 1, and that is our, uh, that's our answer. There's got to be a better way to do this. Let's see, what would have been a better way to do this? I'm not sure. Uh, perhaps at the very beginning, um, instead of changing everything to sines and cosines, maybe at the very beginning, I could have said, uh, let's make this, uh, 1 over tangent of theta, and 
that might have helped things a little bit. Then I could multiply both numerator and denominator times tangent, and that could have, uh, that could have, I could have gotten to my answer a little faster, okay? But the important thing is to get to the answer, not necessarily to get there fast. Okay, next one. Let's do... Oh, this is a good one. This is number nine. This is one minus the sine of theta. Can you all see this? Yeah. One minus the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. And we're going to add the cosine of theta over one minus the sine of theta. Huh. Okay. We are adding something plus its reciprocal. So that's interesting in itself. All right. Um, well, I guess the way that we're going to uh, add these fractions is by getting a common denominator, right? So I'm going to have to multiply this one by cosine of theta over cosine of theta. And I'm going to have to multiply this one by 1 minus sine of theta over 1 minus sine of theta. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. All right. So what does that get me? It gets me 1 minus the sine of, the sine of theta squared. And let me just go ahead and multiply that out. So that's going to be 1 minus 2 sine of theta plus sine squared of theta. Uh, and that's plus cosine squared of theta right there. And that is over uh, 1 minus the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Now, notice sine squared plus cosine squared. Hey, hey, hey. That's just one. Cool. One plus one is two, and I'm left with two minus two sine squared, uh, no, not squared, just the sine of theta, over one minus the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Well, two minus two sine of theta, I believe I can factor a two out from that, and I get two times one minus the sine of theta over one minus the sine of theta times the cosine of theta, and hey, 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 goodbye, and I get 2 divided by the cosine of theta, and I believe we can all agree that that is 2 times the secant of theta, the reciprocal. So this is 2 times the secant of theta. That was a good one. I enjoyed that. All right, last one that we have. This is going to be... 1 minus the sine squared of theta over 1 plus the cosine of theta. Okay. So this looks pretty easy at first. And then I get a little stumped because I think, well, I'm not sure what to do about this. Uh, I guess I could rename this 1 plus the cosine of theta over 1 plus the cosine of theta, but then I'll still have a numerator that doesn't necessarily, you know, jump out and tell me what to do. So let's do this. I have the sine squared of theta, right? Whenever you see squares, you should think, you know, a Pythagorean identity is going to come into play here somewhere. So let's rename this fellow right here 1 minus the cosine squared of theta. So this is going to be 1 minus 1 minus the cosine squared of theta over 1 plus the cosine of theta. Okay, now I can see what's going to happen. All right, because look, difference of squares here. When I, uh, when I factor 1 minus the cosine squared of theta, I'm going to get 1 minus the cosine of theta times 1 plus the cosine of theta. And look, 1 plus the cosine of theta over 1 plus the cosine of theta. So I end up with 1 minus 1 minus the cosine of theta, which is just 1 minus 1 plus the cosine of theta, which is just the cosine of theta. That worked out pretty well. Okay. Hope this helps you, okay? By doing these examples, I'm just trying to show you some strategies that you use uh, in simplifying some trigonometric equations. And uh, like I said, hope it helps, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.